Listen, man, like I told all my kids, all my kids have a college education. I told them all, I don't care what you get a degree in. Until you follow your dream and connect it to your gift, you'll never be happy. You'll never be happy. I just got to tell you, you've got to chase that dream before you die. Man. You should go and live your dream. Just go see. God puts your real life in your imagination. That's where your real, your real life ain't in your present circumstance. Your real life is not in your current situation. Your real life is not in your paycheck. Your real life, he tucks it away in your imagination. Albert Einstein said, imagination is everything. It's a preview to life's coming attractions. Everything you imagine is a preview to a coming attraction. Once you understand that and quit looking at your imagination as hocus pocus, it opens up a wide range of things and possibilities. And God puts your real life in your imagination. Listen to me. This is serious what I'm telling you. Don't you think it's nothing else? Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. That simply means everything that's in your imagination is a preview of a coming attraction that God has for you. That's why he puts it in your imagination. That's why when you tell your imagination to the wrong people, it don't go nowhere. You ever had something you thought was a brilliant idea and you took it in there to your family and your loved ones and they shot it down? You know why they shot it down? Because they couldn't see it. Because God didn't put it in their imagination. He put it in your imagination. If you want to kill a big dream, tell it to a small-minded person. A die like that. It'll just die. I walked in that house, man, and told everybody I was quitting my job to go be a comedian. Everybody in that house shot that down. My ex-wife shot it down. Her mother-in-law shot it down. My mama shot it down. All my friends shot it down. My brothers and sisters shot it down. Don't you quit your job, go be no comedian. You can't make no money telling no jokes like that. It's 1985, who you think you are? If I had listened to them, I wouldn't even be here today. But I didn't listen because it was evidently clear to me. God had put it in my imagination that one day I would be on stage. That was an old song that the Temptations had. It was written by Donny Hathaway and it's called A Song For You. And one of the stanzas in the song I used to sing as a little boy, I've acted out my life on stages with 10,000 people watching and we are alone and I'm singing this song for you. I used to always imagine myself in front of 10,000 people. Man, I'm one of the original kings of comedy, man. You know how many people I done been in front of? I done told jokes in front of 44,000 people before. But if I had listened to my mother, who was saved and a Christian and a Sunday school teacher, if I had listened to her, I wouldn't have quit my job. All my brothers, everybody told me, you can't go be no comedian. I left anyway. I won amateur night on October 8th, 1985, won 50 bucks. I went to work the next day, October 9th, 1985, quit my job. Everybody in my neighborhood called me a fool. I send planes, pick all of them up, take them to show. All of them. All of them. I chase that dream before you die, man. Bishop Jake said one time, Bishop Jake said, I would hate to die and never do the thing I was born to do. You shouldn't let that happen. So what we've got to do is make that change in those standards. That's where the shifts happen. It doesn't happen any other place. If you want to know the difference in people's lives, it all comes down to what are the things that are the must for you versus shoulds. We said to have an extraordinary life, you've got to have an extraordinary psychology, right? Extraordinary psychology means you've got to live in an extraordinary state. To be in an extraordinary state, you've got to condition your nervous system, your body, your physiology and focus to be at their best. Then to do that, though, you can do that. Why doesn't everybody? Not because you can't. We all have the ability. It's because of our standards. How many of you know if you had your life to live over again, you could have done more than what you've done thus far. Raise your hands, please. Now, that proves the point of what we do, what we accomplish, what we produce in life is only a tip of the iceberg of what's possible for us. I want you to think about some major goal that gives your life a sense of meaning right now. You have something special. It says, ask and you shall receive, but I'm sure it meant ask intelligently. I'm sure that's what God meant. I'm sure he didn't mean bitch and you will receive wine and you will receive. I don't think that was the instruction. Now, if you were going to ask intelligently, there might be five elements of that. Number one, you'd have to ask specifically, wouldn't you? 
Let me ask in a general way. People do it all the time. They go, I want more money. Fine, here's a dollar. Get out of here. Very often, you're getting what you're asking for. You're just not aware of how general you're asking. Clarity is power. The more clear you are about exactly what it is you want, the more your brain knows how to get there. Your brain is a servo mechanism. It's like a bomb. Those bombs, those missiles, they have a servo mechanism. So if the target moves, it knows what the target is. It follows it. Your brain, when you condition it, knows exactly what to go for and it'll find a way to get there. Miles Monroe, great orator and speaker, said the wealthiest place on the planet, it's not in the Far East where there's oil in the ground. It's not in South Africa where there are diamond mines. He said the wealthiest place on the planet is the cemetery. Because there you'll find greatness that we've never seen. There you'll find talent and genius and potential never actualized. Perhaps that's why Henry David Thoreau wrote the words, Oh God, to reach the point of death, only to realize that you've never lived. Maybe that's why some unknown writer wrote the words, What if you live your whole life only to discover that it was wrong? That it was wrong. That you were chosen to do something else and you didn't do it. Did you ever buy a certain outfit or a certain car and suddenly see that car outfit everywhere? How many of you ever had that experience? Say, I. How come that car outfit's everywhere? It always was everywhere, but now you notice it. And the reason is because there's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system, the RAS. That part of your brain determines what you notice and what you don't notice. Your brain spends most of its time trying to make sure you don't notice because you'll go crazy if you notice everything. But when you decide what's most important to you, your brain goes after it. Everyone I know who's successful builds what I call an RPM plan. An RPM is built on the metaphor that the way to get from where you are to where do you want to go to the fastest is you've got to build power, like in a car, RPMs. And the R stands for they know the result they're after. They know what they want precisely. If you don't know exactly what you want or you let yourself get beyond that into something general, you're not going to achieve it. Clarity is power. You've got to know the specific result you're after. What do you want? If you can't answer that question right now in your personal life, in your body, in your relationships, in your finances, in your spirituality, then you're not going to be as fulfilled as you want to be. What makes life valuable? What makes life worthwhile? What makes life work well? There's usually about a half a dozen things that makes 80% of the difference. Keep looking for the few things that makes the most difference. So here's my final message to you because I've gotten carried away. I thought I was going to send you like a five minute message, but as you can see there's no script here. It's just me going a little crazy with you, but I want to really see you get what you want this year. Don't let this year be like last. And if last year was great, still don't let it be that way. Raise the standard. If your life is perfect and extraordinary, you darn well know you're not going to be happy unless you keep making it better. That's what makes us feel alive. It's not what we get that make us happy. It's who we become and what we're able to give because we've become more. That sense of contribution is what creates the deepest meaning. What's easy to do is also easy not to do. That's the difference between success and failure. That's the difference between pennies and fortune. That's the difference in flourishing and not having much. That's the difference between trinkets and treasures. So, here's my assignment for if you want one. If you want to go from conversation to some action, here's a simple thing to do. What's an area of your life right now that you really want to improve? What's an area that's important to improve? If your body's great, how about your career? If career's great, how about your relationships? Intimate one especially, or your kids, or your relationship with your creator, spiritual side of your life, or is it your finances? Figure an area that really matters. Decide on that area. Write down what your life is like in that area right now as specifically as possible. So you might say, well, I'm 13.5 pounds overweight, <laughs> you know, whatever the weight is, whatever the situation is, or my body fat's like this, or I'm I wake up exhausted in the morning, and you write the truth of where you are right now, so you're real clear. Or I'm not in a relationship, I say I want a relationship, but I, I'm not in one, and I don't seem to find them, all the good ones seem to be gone is my belief, you know, and I, and I really do want one, but I don't have it. Whatever your definition, oh, I'm in a relationship, and God, I wish I wasn't in a relationship, <laughs> I'm planning my escape, wherever you are, or I have a lo wonderful relationship, we love each other, but there just isn't enough passion. Just write the truth of where you are. The area you want to change, but write how it is. I like to use that uh, image a lot of the ocean, standing in front of the ocean with a container in your hand. You know, and you're there and you have this container, but what is it? Is it a thimble with a hole in it? 
Is it a small cracked cup? Is it a mug? Is it a vase? Is it a, a, a quart jar or a pail or a bucket or a wash tub? Or do you have a pipeline? But no matter how much you have, whatever your container it is, and no matter how much you're taking from the ocean of life, and even though we're all standing there, we're not robbing each other, and there's plenty for everyone, and no matter how much we take, there is no way we're going to run that ocean dry. It's absolutely impossible. And if you can th see yourself standing at the ocean of life in the same way, and remember, the container that you have is your consciousness. And you can always change your consciousness. And it doesn't matter if you came from poverty. It doesn't matter where you came from. And it doesn't even matter what your parents' beliefs were or if they came from the depression or whatever. Because it's your consciousness and what you're choosing to think and believe about prosperity and your ability to deserve it is what's going to create it for you. We're affected by what we learn and what we know and the decisions we make. The decisions we think we don't make are just as effective and affect us just as much as the actual decisions we do make. So not deciding is, is a decision. But here's what the sum total of our life is at the moment, the decisions we've made in the past. Now all you have to do to change your future is to start changing those decisions. If someone decides to look until they find the opportunity, see, that is a powerful decision. And if you can help somebody make that decision, say, if you haven't been actively looking, my best advice would be to you, the advice was given to me, keep looking till you find something. Every week, spend some time looking, looking, looking. Because here's an ancient promise. If you keep looking, you will find. The ancient promise says, if you want a door to open, you must knock. 